what's uh, the one thing that they regretted in their career? Like, what's the one thing you wish you had done but you didn't do? And it was always the same answer. They always said, I wish I'd created something for myself. They spent an entire career developing other people's dreams and never once took time to develop their own concept, their own idea. So I tell my students now when they're first getting in, start there, start with your own concept and do something that you're really excited about. You know, I don't care if it's, you know, whatever story you want to tell, but just tell the story and get it out there on social media in any shape, any way, shape or form that you can. Have you ever wondered what a rock star has in common with a successful CEO or what unites leaders across every industry and art form? Welcome to the Art of Connection, where we dive into this question and uncover the secret ingredient of success, the ability to connect with your audience. It's not about numbers though. It's creating a meaningful, powerful connection. And it's this connection that shapes outcomes, influences careers, and makes a lasting impact. So strap in and let's figure out how we can connect with our audiences in the art of connection. Well, welcome back to the art of connection where we help you build bridges and not walls with your audience. I'm your host, Isaac. And today I have the amazing Andreas Alvarez or Andy, as many people who know him call him. Um, And he is coming to us with 23 years of experience in the animation industry with shows like Godzilla, Men in Black. I didn't actually know that was an animated show until I saw that you had it on your website. And then I actually, when I first was meeting you, I looked it up a little bit. I'm like, oh, wow, this is like actually really cool. Uh, and then a show that we all know and maybe love, I love it, SpongeBob. So I think that's, I think that's like got to be one of your coolest like claims of fame is SpongeBob because Probably a lot of and people in the animation industry would love to say that they, you know, had a touch point, but that's very cool. So um, he has done both character design and storyboarding and is one of the most enthusiastic and kind people I have gotten the chance to interact with, like in my life so far, um, especially for meeting him off of LinkedIn. Um, and then I think I just had one last thing here. Uh, this is a guy who works day in and day out figuring out how to appeal and connect to audiences through either the storyboard or the character design. And that's exactly why I have him on this podcast called The Art of Connection, because this is a guy who's been doing it 23 years, and I think that he might have one or two things uh, to say, (laughs) definitely more than that, to say about uh, connection. So yeah, did I I miss anything? Is that anything that you hit on that you think is great? (laughs) No, that was that was a, the most perfect intro that I think I've ever gotten. So, very very nice, amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and yeah, the the honor goes both ways. Like I said, I'm I'm very honored to um, talk to you as well, and talk to whoever else is just interested in pursuing a dream, uh, believing in themselves, and you know, really, it's about for me um, achieving something against all odds. You know, when everything's stacked against you, when everyone in your life is like, don't do this. This is a stupid thing to do. You need to like, just be more grounded. And, you know, it was hard, you know, for me personally, um, coming from a a place in California, which really wasn't connected to the industry. Um, hopefully I'm not jumping right into it without, uh, no, getting to your first question, but I feel it's nice to give a little bit of like, uh, backstory um and for me personally uh growing up really uh and it was a a part of uh, los angeles called the south bay uh which i do love um i grew up in a a town called uh, carson california which is not not really well known but our neighboring uh, city is compton which is very well known for uh you know some pretty uh heavy duty uh rappers that have come out of it and everything um, it, so again, like I said, it was, it was an interesting, interesting thing growing up because like I said, it was kind of a, a dangerous neighborhood, which means my parents didn't really let me go outside a lot. Like I really had to stay more indoors. And, uh, so I had to find things to kind of entertain myself. And, you know, for me, it was actually like my toys, you know, I, I would love to like play toys and kind of have like, you know, little, uh, plays, you know, or movies going on in my head. 
Um, and then my dad being from El Paso, Texas, um, he grew up, uh, working on farms and, uh, he didn't have like a lot of kids to play with. So his thing was drawing. He loved to draw to kind of entertain himself. And when I was really little, I used, I remember just kind of going into his room and seeing him so focused on something, you know, I, I just remember seeing him just completely like immersed in something that I couldn't see right off the bat, but I could feel it walking into the room. And I remember just not even talking to him, but just kind of sitting next to him and just say, just kind of observing him drawing. And it was so fascinating to me that uh, someone could do this, that like literally just pick up a pencil and suddenly anything you could think of or imagine would start to materialize in front of almost like a 3d printer now, you know, but like on paper. Yeah. And I remember asking him like, you know, how you do it. I really thought it was the pencil. I remember he would leave the room and I'd grab his pencil and try and draw like him. And obviously I couldn't do it, you know, but he would always encourage me to, uh, to practice. So, you know, you just got to practice and keep, keep going at this, stay consistent with it. And I remember just being very shy and not really thinking I, I could ever do it, but he was very, very adamant and saying, you don't, you really don't know what you can and can't do. You know, you can never really be too sure that because you can dream something that it can't be achieved, you know, and for a five-year-old, I don't know if like he knew that would like hit me so hard or I could even end <laughs> what he was saying, but it kind of did. It kind of pierced me like down to my soul. Like, wait, you think I can do this? Like you actually believe I can, I can do this as good as you. Um, that just put something in me where I felt like, well, maybe I should kind of get past the pain of not being able to actually draw and just push past that, you know? So that's something I would start doing very early on in my life is getting this sort of delayed gratification, knowing that I'm putting in work now and may not see it yet, but it's, it's down the road. There was always something to look forward to. And that, and what, what I meant by looking forward to was not fame, was not money, was not like anybody recognizing you for it. It was just for myself, just to know that I could actually try something, give it my best and actually see a little bit of a, a return on that. Yeah. So that's all it was, it was for me is, is just, and I still say to this day in my career, 23 years later, I'm always trying to come back to that. Like I try not to be motivated by money or by, you know, oh, this prestigious project or anything like that. To me, it's about being five again and just doing it because I love it. Even if I never worked in the industry or never had an opportunity to do anything, I would still be doing it just for myself, you know, just for like, you know, like five minutes, you know, here and there in the house, just sitting down sketching and just reconnecting to something that feels so special to me. And it ended up actually getting me and my dad like even closer, you know, as father and son, I didn't play sports or anything like that, but this is something like we could share together. And it, it was always so special. He passed in 2018. Um, but when I, I remember when I got into the industry, he was just so elated. I mean, I had never seen him so happy um, because that was a big dream of his. He wanted to work in cartoons. Um, when he came out to California, Hanna-Barbera was like the big, you know, studio happening. Um, I believe it did try out. He didn't, he didn't quite make it. Um, and then he had me, so he had like a baby and, you know, responsibilities and stuff. So it was something that I never knew it was something he, he was so passionate about doing almost like an unfulfilled dream of his. So he would just like, again, go to his little place in our house and just draw and reconnect to it. Somehow I stumbled into it and was like, Hey, like, I want to try too. like, I want to see if, if this is even possible. So I kept pushing myself and kept pushing. Luckily, I got a great high school art teacher also who, um, and I don't know why he did this, but I remember the first year <laughs> I showed up fresh freshman year, everybody has like a place to sit, you know, the whole thing, whatever. And then there was like this back room that just had all these like gadgets. It was almost like, it was almost like a Doc Brown, you know, to, to my like <laughs> muddy or something. And uh, just this kooky old guy. And yeah, yeah. he said, hey, like, um, I don't know, for whatever reason, he said, Hey, like, if you want that whole back area, you could sit there. No one ever does, but you could sit there if you want. You don't have to sit out here. And I said, Okay. 
So I just went back there and like, it was like my own little like science, science lab, you know, I would just kind of like get into airbrushing or painting or, you know, he never, he was never the art teacher either. That was like, Hey, like, I don't want you to do animation or comic books or any of that sort of stuff. He was actually okay with popular culture, which is what I had loved, you know, at the time. So uh, long story short, that's still worlds away from anything animation. Uh, I had no idea that, you know, there was such thing as storyboarding, character design. I just thought it, it all magically happened somehow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, exactly. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I'm not, like I said, I'd never seen a studio. I'd never even been to the Valley. No, yeah. Or if, if, if your viewers don't know, uh, you know, 90% of animation done is in this like little like place in Los Angeles called the Valley. And like Burbank and like Glendale and, you know, North Hollywood and all these spots are very synonymous with like probably 90% of what you see on TV and streaming right now. And uh, I'd never seen it. I'd never really ventured that far uh, out of my, you know, my little comfort zone. But uh, I remember again, I also had a really good friend, a best friend named Rolando, who unfortunately also passed when he was 19. So it was, he was, he, he died really young, but he was, and Rolando for me personally is how I judge all my friends now. Not because like I have friends who are like, you know, tell you, Hey, you're doing great, blah, blah, blah. But he was the friend that I was always like, why aren't you doing this? You know, <laughs> why aren't you further in this? And I remember at the time, That's amazing. And, as I was getting like closer to graduating high school, I had no idea what I was going to do with myself. Um, obviously not drawing. That was not even a, a thing. You know, it's like got to be realistic. No, nobody <laughs> does that. Yeah. 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 It never yeah. happened before, you know? Um, and he would always tell me like, what's up with this drawing thing? Like, are, are you drawing? And I said, no, no, like I'm, I'm doing a little bit of sketching, but I had an uncle who worked for uh, Toyota, the headquarters, which used to be in California. Now, funny enough, it's located here in Texas. So one of my uncles uh, actually got me a job right out of high school uh, working in in the uh, very uh, prestigious car wash department that would literally wash cars for executives. And oh, uh, that is. <laughs> it, it was, it was probably the, one of the hardest physical jobs I've, I've ever had to do. Um, and uh, cause I was like, you know, as a kid working at the mall and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> but I remember my uncle saying, if you want, this could be sort of like a whole career, you know, you could just move up and, you know, be part of this whole company and sort of like a cradle to grave sort of job, I guess is what, you know, you'd call it. But yeah, I remember like doing my job, but also feeling a little bit miserable every day and just feeling a little bit like, okay, I'm just going to wake up tomorrow and do the same thing. And then I'm going to go to sleep and wake up, do the same thing. Nothing like exciting was really happening. So I remember taking my sketchbook with me just as a goof. I was so low on the totem pole. I didn't even have a locker. So I, I had to keep my sketchbook in the break room um, with my lunch, you know, which is like really sad. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I would go every, every lunch break, I would just draw like just, you know, just, I didn't even have like a, you know, anything to listen to any music. I would just draw like for whatever reason, like, like creativity was pouring out of me at that point. Wow. And wow. Uh, I remember just feeling very connected to my sketchbook because I remember every time I looked at a sketchbook page, I felt like I could be anything on this page. I don't have any limits. There's no one telling me to be here or do this. You know, like I could be at any point in history on this page through my imagination. And uh, one particular day we got very busy and backed up on uh, washing cars. And uh, one executive's car was really late. And I remember she walked down from her office, which is not a good thing. You know, that's usually your last day on the job. She went right, she went right, right to uh, our break room and decided to just wait some reason she picked up my sketchbook and started just flipping through it. Um, I get a call from my boss and he says, I really, I need to see you right now. And everybody gave me that look like, and I said, you know, I was literally like slapping hands with everyone. I'm like, great working with you. You know, I'll punch you back. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you know, good, good meeting you guys. You know, that's yeah. the thing. <laughs> and he's there and he's like, Hey, I just want you to know uh, in the break room, one of the executives, has your sketchbook and wants to take it. And I was like, what? Like, okay. And he's like, yeah, she said something. She knows people at Sony animation and she'd love to 
take your sketchbook and just show them. And I just remember thinking like, why? Like, why? You, I mean, you have like, in my mind, the best artist on the planet that you can choose. What, what do you want with me? You know, I'm just some dude, you know, washy your car, I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah, uh, gonna, re- re- gonna report so- you to the sketch police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I said, it's it's some you know something I pay what under eight dollars for you know, and yeah. literally just put in my own sweat equity into my ideas and my concepts. I loved comic books at the time too, so I was drawing kind of sequential things, not understanding really what they were, but just yeah. mimicking them. I was sort of like a parrot, you know. I'd hear something and then I'd just spit it right back to you, you know, reflect it. Anyway, long story short, I guess. Um, uh, I got a call from, you know, some people at Sony and they said, Hey, we'd love to invite you down in the studio. I think I just turned 19 at the time too. So I was a baby, you know? Um, and, uh, they said, Hey, like, you know, we'd like to give you a test for storyboard revision. And I remember thinking like, what is that? Like, I didn't know what it was. It was like, it sounds very technical and yeah, probably something I don't know how to do. And they said, no, no, no. Like, Basically, it's like what you're already doing. It's like like comic book pages. It's like draw like pictures yeah. in sequence. I said, oh, I understand that. Okay, cool. And they literally like right there and then gave me a test, which I don't think they like ever do. Um, and it was a very magical, magical time. It was the late 90s, early 2000s, like 1999. This is back when studios were like very much interested in finding talent outside of the normal college you know because you had all the majors like cal arts and san jose state and like you know all the uh you know the big studios whatever or excuse me big universities but they had said that they started seeing a lot of people drawing the same like they all had similar teachers sim- similar mentors similar things and they were for whatever reason just looking for something different i guess you know i mean i took it as a compliment i was like okay thank you my work's different Okay. <laughs> so, so again, um, I took the test, you know, about a week later, got a call. I said, you know, I'd like to invite you on to, uh, you know, what at the time was Godzilla, uh, the animated series based on the the movie, not the really good Godzilla, which I really, really loved. Um, but this was like the, the nineties Godzilla, um, which is fine. You know, I, I could care less. And I remember, uh, like I said, I, I got my first cubicle with the guy who did the lightsaber animation for New Hope. So all of all of Luke's stuff, all of Vader's stuff, and uh, he, was, he was like probably in his like late sixties, you know. And here I am, just some kid. And um, I remember he like looked over on Godzilla. Like I, I'm sorry, I just can't get over that. I'm, <laughs> I'm imagining it being 19 years old, like working on Godzilla. Like, dude, that would <laughs> going from car wash one day to like. Bro, you, I couldn't, I can't even explain to you that like my life was like just nothing but clouds. And for whatever reason, the cloud, just a, a little sliver of light just opened up. Right. I, I, and I, I still to this day don't even know why or how or whatever, but I, I just, the universe said, you know, for a brief moment, if you want this window. And I remember thinking, and I told my dad too, I said, dad, like, um, they're offering me a job. Like, I don't know what to do, you know? Uh, my uncle had gotten me this job. I didn't really like want to like just quit or anything, you know, I just yeah, felt really yeah. bad, but also it's like, my dad's like, well, you got to think about this, you know, is this something you really want to do? And I remember thinking to myself, like, I, I can just go either way right now. I literally have a fork in the road. Like I can go, you know, the safe route and, you know, have a family and, you know, the whole nine within maybe like two years and be fine, you know, or the, the other path, which is completely unknown. Like I have no idea what I'm, I'll be getting myself into, but I felt like I just had to know, I just had to know, like, could I stand with the best? Almost like that, that part in Rocky where he said, like, was it about winning against Apollo Creed ever? It was just like, could I stand with him? You know, that's all he ever wanted to achieve. And that I felt mm-hmm. very, very much the same way. Could I stand with like probably some of the best people to like ever pick up a pencil, you know? And I'm telling you, they scoured earth they didn't just scour like america they scout scattered like literally the the best artists on the planet and i'm talking like they're in their 40s you know yeah. well seasoned and yeah. they didn't go light on me you know what i mean like they they definitely put me through um lots and lots of Was it you know, right? <laughs> no not at all no, I, no, I, 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 my 
my, you know, uh, creative ass kicked every day, <laughs> you know. Um, but I loved it. I, I really, it didn't bother me. Like I always thought to myself back when I was like five, if I just push through the pain, if I just push through it just a little bit, there's something really exciting on the other side because that's all it ever was to me. It was just a little bit of pain. Okay, I'm not there yet, but still I can keep pushing myself and every day grind a little bit more so I get closer to my my goal. And, you know, hopefully any of you guys listening to this right now, and if you are in a place in your life where you don't feel like you're making an impact or you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, that's okay. I, I honestly want to tell you, like, that is the greatest gift you could ever have. Because for me, the journey is everything. I would care nothing about what I have today if I couldn't look back at to the point when I had nothing. It's looking back at that nothing and saying to myself, oh my gosh, I've come this far. You know, so I always tell people if you're like, you know, living in a, a, a one bedroom apartment or something like that, and you're just completely like, you know, working three jobs and just, you know, just through the ringer, that's good. That's okay. Like you need something to motivate you to go in a new direction. You need something to, to like a fire within you to burn. And sometimes it's very, it's going to be very, very painful, you know, whether it's emotionally or financially or some, there will be some cost you will have to pay, you know, and whatever that cost is, if that cost outweighs, you know, everything else, then you might stick with it. You might stay in this long enough and actually build a career for yourself. But I, I really have to tell that to people because I, I have like for, for students like yourself and the people I meet today, they have a plan. They have, oh, I want to do this, this and this, you know, and I feel so envious of that because I really didn't have that. I really was kind of, uh, you know, just really like very much in the moment, you know, what, yeah. what's happening yeah. right now? Like, okay, like, let's go with it, you know, but, and I do remember before my, my best friend Rolando passed, um, I did get a chance to tell him, you know, I, I, I got in. You know, he was so happy, you know, and honest, honestly, to this day, like I've, I've never had a person who was, you know, that incredible in my life. And, you know, I I really do feel like wherever he is right now, I feel like he's looking down and looking out for me. Um, but yeah, so again, uh, once that happened, um, and I'm sorry if I'm going on too long, but it it really is important. Yeah. This has been amazing that your audience hears the, the, the dirty details of doing this. It's not, it wasn't a pretty thing for me. It wasn't like the red carpet was unrolled or anything like that. I mean, I still had to slug it out every day, you know, and, and, and earn my spot, not just, okay, you get in. Now you have to stay in. Now you, now comes the real, now comes the real work, you know? And, I always felt like my dad was far more talented than I was, but I was far more stubborn. You know, I would just <laughs> like a dog. I just bite on your leg and I just want to let go. You know, I just get an idea and I said, I- I'm going to achieve this. Even if it's one finger at the top of the mountain, I'm there. You know, <laughs> even if it's one thing, you know, and I'm, ex- I will get there, you know, no matter the cost. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. That's amazing, man. Uh, but that that was my entrance into the industry. I had no real formal training uh, from any university um, other than just what I was doing in high school and uh, what I was doing uh, when I graduated at a car wash. Um, I, I don't know what happened. It just like, again, like uh, cosmic rays or something just were hitting me. And I just felt like uh, being an artist, I feel like there's creativity like going on all above us and around us. And I feel as an, as, as an artist, we should be like an antenna, I guess, mm-hmm. and just being able to click into it, you know, be able to connect to that, whatever creativity or whatever wants to come through. So you're sort of like the vessel, you know, mm-hmm. um, I always do feel like a lot of this stuff, I don't even come up with myself. I just sit there and let it happen. I just move my arm. If that's, that's one piece of advice I could give any of you out there who uh, wants to be an artist or wants to be creative move your arm don't sit there and just think about it don't sit there and just dream about it I, that's that's important but this is about doing this is about building muscle memory you know and even if it looks bad even if there's drawings that you're not going to be proud of and there's going to be many just push past them just keep remembering that what this the equity you're putting in now 
will pay off later down the road. Maybe it's a few years, maybe it's a few days. I'm not sure wherever you are on your journey. Um, and uh, soon after uh, I got onto Godzilla, I was a huge fan of Batman, the animated series growing up uh, yes, in, yes, in the exactly. 90s. You know, an absolute, you know, if if your fans are a little, you know, too young to remember, you know, that that series, please go and, and look it up. It's incredible. Um, and uh, I remember they said a director was coming on board off of, uh, I believe it was the, uh, the Batman that was like, oh, Batman Beyond, I think was the, the one. Um, and they said, this guy's from Canada. He's like, you know, incredible. And, uh, but I didn't care. I just love Batman period. So I was like, I don't care what, what, what he did. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. and, uh, they said, uh, it was, I remember it was like on a Monday and they said, uh, he's going to be coming, uh, on a Monday to the studio. And somebody told me that he was a, a smoker. And unfortunately at the time I was a smoker also, which I hope none of you guys are. Um, so, so I knew that he's going to maybe, and there's only one place you could smoke, you know, outside of the studio. <laughs> So I, oh, even that I sat, <laughs> I remember sitting there almost all day waiting and waiting, you know, chain smoking probably, you know, it's terrible. Yeah. He, he, he ends up showing up. He's got like this, like, like he's dressed like kind of like James Dean, you know, like this, like jacket, white t-shirt, like these jeans cuffed up, you know, his whole nine. It's very interesting looking guy. And he's got like a briefcase, like a businessman briefcase, which I thought was hilarious. And I remember he just like sat down and I started talking to him and I said, Hey, like, you know, I'm introduced myself. And I said, um, I hear you're going to, you know, be directing on uh, men in black, uh, which is it, which was in its third season at that point. I hadn't seen it actually. I saw the movie, but I hadn't seen the, the actual cartoon series like yourself either. Um, <laughs> but there was so many like shows going on. Like at that time, Sony was releasing movies and immediately making cartoon spinoffs. So it's like we always had something to roll on to, you know, which is kind of a rare thing these days. Um, so anyway, uh, I remember just saying, hey, if you need a, a revisionist, uh, please let me know. I'd love to do some work with you. And he literally was like, come upstairs. And he literally went upstairs and went to his office and pulled me off of Godzilla and said, you're now with me. Uh, mm -hmm. The guy's name is Darwin Cook. If, if any of you guys want to look him up, yeah. um, he's probably one of the probably one of the most incredible, you know, talented, uh, artists from that era. I mean, he's just so prolific and, uh, I was so lucky to be mentored by someone like that. I really didn't deserve it again. You know, I've, I've always been in situations where I don't feel like I really deserve it, but I'm sure going to take it if I have. And this goes to anybody. If you have an opportunity to be around anyone doing their best, I don't care what they're doing. Even sleeping floors, you should be you should sit next to them, you know, because they're going to be putting out energy that you're going to feed on. And trust me, you're going to get better too. So I remember him, um, uh, doing quite a bit of, uh, work, you know, he, he had a kind of weird schedule. Um, but he, he was amazing. I mean, this guy could draw like nobody's business. And he was another one like me who was just kind of raw, hadn't really gone to like art school. You know, he just was like someone who loved to draw. Um, and, uh, so anyway, like, uh, I got a chance to work with him, uh, for the, for that third season. Uh, fortunately after the third season, uh, he ended up leaving animation just to go back into comics, which I think was a good move for him because really like there wasn't anything left for him in animation, because if you don't know this already, the higher up you get in animation, the less you're going to draw really like you're, you're really not going to be drawing as much. You're going to be like, producing you're gonna be you know doing those sort of things um and he really wanted to draw i mean this is a guy who got no enjoyment out of just being sort of like a supervisor or anything like that like he wanted to get in there like in the range and fight yeah so he knew that was like like comics was going to be the right way for him so unfortunately i never got a chance to work with him again which you know he, he passed in 2016 uh, which is, you know, very, very sad. Cause he's, he's such a great, great talent. I, I hope your audience can look him up and yeah. uh, check out his work and his achievements. Cause you know, that's, that's a highlight in my career personally, just being next to him, you know? Yeah. So, um, but anyway, that was my lead up in animation. I want to stop there because I want you to get to your questions and, uh, 
Forgive me for no, no. rambling. No, this was, uh, you know, I honestly, so what's it? I, I feel like this will sound rude the way it comes out, but let me just explain. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I invited you on for a conversation, but I got like a lecture, but it was actually a really great <laughs> lecture, man. You, uh, you took me for quite the journey there. Um, no, that was, that, that is amazing. Honestly, you answered actually a lot of questions that I had, um, actually. And, and I think one thing, you know, I think one thing that really stands out and it really started just kind of presenting, it's, I think itself like halfway, um, kind of through, you know, just like you sharing a little bit of your journey and whatnot. I, I think, you know, one thing I think a lot about is, you know, I'm doing this podcast, the art of connection. It's about connecting. It's about learning how to, you know, kind of grow in your ability to communicate. But I think that you hit on like such an important point. And that is, I feel like half of communication is having something to communicate. And, you know, you can, you can do the best, you know, you can do the best marketing, you can do the best, like, you know, you can be the best artist or whatever. Um, You can do all these technical things. Um, You know, you can speak 20 different languages or whatever. Um, But I think, I think one thing that's like really like presents itself and I, I am so glad that you really like took the time to kind of develop um, a little bit of like, you know, your beginning, you, you sitting next to your dad, um, your friend, Ronaldo, all those different things, because, uh, excuse me, that was R- Ronaldo, correct? Oh, uh, Rolando was his. Rolando. I'm so, I'm so sorry about that. R- Rolando. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll get <good. laughs> it. Um, what's it? Your, your friendship with, R- um, with Rolando. I, I think it's so, it really fleshes out such an important concept. And that is that time investing in yourself, time spent on like the character side of things, time spent on like kind of growing in just who you are, it it creates it creates so much like worth and value um, that you then have to be able to share. And that was actually another part of kind of like, you know, what I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, was even, you know, Obviously, you're as an animate or as, you know, working in animation, you're obviously you're working on stuff that's ultimately going out to ma- the masses, to, you know, to audiences. But even, you know, another part of your audience is realizing that you're, you know, you're presenting to director, showrunner, producers, um, you're presenting to these key figures that make the shows happen. And I think, you know, again, you can be like the best technical person but, and you can have the most experience, like, you know, a little bit like you were saying, you know, there's people out there that were probably way more qualified, you know, qualified, Mm -hmm. but you know, your, your attitude that had been kind of refined in yourself and that when you got that opportunity, like when opportunity knocked on your door, like you already had things like firmly inside of you. And it, that was like, really, that was where the magic happened was there was an audience that wanted to hear something and you are ready to say it. You are ready to, you know, you are ready to start doing it. Um, and so I just, you know, I just, I, I love your story, Andy, so much. And I'm honestly, I'm excited for when the movie comes out, the Pixar movie. <laughs> um, no, dude, that's, no, seriously. Uh, no, it's it's a really, it's a beautiful story. And and actually also, um, just for the audience, uh, just a huge congratulations. You're a recent father. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I just wanted to, you know, I don't want to get too sappy here. <laughs> Well, I don't want to get too sentimental, but I just want to say that's so amazing. Um, you know, just that your dad, uh, he had to kind of move away maybe a little bit from drawing stuff. Um, but now here you are like well set into your career, um, having a baby. And I, I, I just think that's so cool. Um, you know, what's it, you know, pressing pause on just like the, you know, connecting with audiences and everything. Again, it's like you really I, cannot under, you cannot undervalue um, that personal journey you go on. And, and ultimately, at the end of the day, if, if all you're ever doing is just shell, selling kind of BS because, you mm-hmm. you know, you've tried to just run away from that personal work and, you you know, whatever, um, and you're not doing, you're not making things like, you know, the rocky part where standing with the best, um, you're yeah. not doing those kind of things, you're not challenging yourself, uh, then really, you know, you don't have so much, to, you don't have, in my opinion, very much to give. And so... Anyway, I just want to, I just want to, you know, kind of thank you. Sail that, tile that together, man. But uh, yeah. that's, yeah, no, yeah. seriously. I think that's where like our, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you know, when we were like developing our friendship, even like when we were working together, like as like teacher, student type of thing, um, you were becoming a dad, you know? And I remember thinking to myself, like, 
how incredible is that? You know, because I remembered how amazing that experience was, uh, that experience was when, with, when, with, you know, drawing up my dad and all that sort of stuff. But like for me now, I feel like that's something I'd love to, um, share with my, my daughter. And, uh, I'm already drawing her. Like she's, you know, she sleeps all the time. So she's the perfect model, uh, to draw. And, uh, I, I think again, like, uh, I hope that's something we can share together. I mean, if she's open to it and open to, uh, creating things with dad, you know, I'd love to, to have that same bond and never push her like in any direction. Like, Oh, you have to be this, you have to be that. I really want when me and my wife were talking about like all the things we need to do, you know, as parents and everything. And I said, you know, for me personally, I just can't wait to see all the things she is going to teach us. You know, I really feel like she has so much to teach us. Uh, so I have so many things to learn from her, you know, where mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be the, the parent in that sense. Oh, I, I'm going to teach you everything. But honestly, I feel that's a very kind of like one dimensional way to look at any relationship, you know, um, and that's with my students, you know, I, it's a little further in my journey when I got into teaching, but you know, that's also something I feel very much, um, you know, a, a very big connection to is uh, as a teacher and an educator, um, I, I need to listen to my students. Like they're the ones, you know, there was a time in my life where all my mentors were older than me. You know, all the people I looked up to now they're all younger than me. If you can believe that, you know, yourself, yourself included, um, you know, and, and that's why I say to myself, you just, just be open to, to, you know, whatever comes toward you, everybody on this planet has something to teach you. If you're just willing to listen, if you're willing to sit for five seconds and just listen to them, let them tell you their experience, let them tell you what they went through in their life and how they came out of it, either a better or maybe even a worse person, you know, that can happen yeah. too. Um, but I feel like that human experience is everything to me. It's not just a computer screen or a pencil or any of that sort of stuff. You know, it's you, you're the magic, you're the, th- you're the killer app. You know what I mean? And uh, I really do feel that if you spend as much time fostering good relationships and friendships with people, you're going to have a much more um, enriching career because I feel like if all I had was credits at the end of the day, I'd feel pretty sorry for myself that I didn't make some of the best friends I ever had in my life. And that's honestly the thing I'm, I'm most proud of is the friendships and the bonds that I've made with all these, you know, great artists. And I always tell this to all my students in every class I teach, make friends with like everyone in your class. Do not think you have to lock yourself away in a room and just draw 24 hours a day and not interact with anyone. You're not going to get anywhere in this life by doing that. You need other people to help you get to that point. And you need to be, you know, um, open to what they have to teach you as well. Thank you so much for coming on, Andy. Um, I actually had a couple Thank speed round. I had a couple speed round questions. Unfortunately, I'll have to. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess <laughs> actually, I'll just actually have to bring. I'll have to bring you back on sometime if you could do that, and I'll get through all of my speed round questions. Uh, but I just want to. I just want to get the um, the last one, which I have some fun ones, by the way. So, but so that's <laughs> not. That's definitely you know. I think what's you got to come back for a part two. <laughs> Uh, but no, I just want to say, um, what is your encouragement to someone trying to figure out how to connect with their audience? And then I'll, uh, and then also real quick, super quick before you answer that, um, you can find, um, Andy at ADC school online and it's really, really amazing. If you are at all interested at all interested in the animation industry and storyboarding, um, then I would highly recommend checking it out. Like not like I feel so salesy right now, but you actually, you really do gain <laughs> such amazing, um, you get access, you get like one-on-one access with Andy, uh, with a couple other people who are like, could be, you know, the people that are working on your left and right shoulder. And then, you know, I personally, I can attest to it. Like I was able to ask him like literally every single question. And in my case, I pivoted away a little bit away from the animation industry, but the insight that I got hit, uh, got from him about working in a studio, all those different things, um, literally invaluable. Like, I, I don't think you could a- attach a price tag to that. I, I asked so many questions. So, um, anyway, so just <laughs> put that out there, check him out on LinkedIn. Um, I think on all pretty much all socials, 
um, hey, and if you have an amazing animated show, also you can check him out for that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he also does that. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so with that, uh, I just love to hear uh, the answer. What's your encouragement to someone trying to figure out how to connect with their audience? Well, I'll say this. If, uh, if you're, for instance, someone who's trying to, uh, you know, just work in the animation, and uh, the animation industry, um, obviously you're going to need your portfolio to connect to recruiters or any of those sort of people. Um, but I, I often like to tell uh, a lot of people now, you should try and not just reach out to, um, you know, recruiter or any of those things. You should just try and reach out to people in general. Okay. And obviously now with in- Instagram, um, ArtStation, a few of those, you know, uh, Facebook, you know, any of those sites, um, you can you can connect with anyone you know who's creative. Um, I always say, uh, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Hang around people that are gonna are are basically pointed in the same direction you're pointed in. You know, think of the Wizard of Oz. You know, Dorothy and uh, the Scarecrow and everyone. They're all going to Oz. So why not band up together? You know, and give each other moral support and you know creative support. Uh, the other thing I try and do is um, I remembered something when I started working in the animation industry. This was like maybe like year two or year three. Um, and uh, sorry, my dogs. Are- <laughs> You're good. Uh, and uh, at night, the studio would stay open 24 hours a day. And uh, we had uh, what we call studio, studio junkies at the time. And uh, I was one of them. We would just stay after hours and just draw and hang out. I would ask... Um, Jack, what? I would ask everyone in studio, what's what's uh, the one thing that they regretted in their career? Like, what's the one thing you, you wish you had done but you didn't do? And it was always the same answer. Mm. They always said, I wish I'd created something for myself. They spent an entire career mm. developing other people's dreams and never once took time to develop their own concept, their own idea. So I tell my students now when they're first getting in, start there, start with your own concept and do something that you're really excited about. You know, I don't care if it's, you know, whatever story you want to tell, but just tell the story and get it out there on social media in any shape, any way, shape and form that you can and try and connect as much as possible to that audience and listen to your audience. If they like what they're seeing, connect with them, say, Hey, great. What did you like? Go back, do do more of that that content if possible. Yeah. Um, but that's the one big piece of advice I like to give people is don't spend an entire career just developing things for other people. You have a voice, a very powerful one. You don't even know this, but you could have the next show that changes everything because you believed in yourself and you believed in, in your abilities. You put it out there and that inspires other people to do the same. So no matter how, again, you don't need a a big degree or anything like that. All you need is just, um, you know, uh, belief in yourself to just try. Don't give up on yourself. I didn't, like I said, if I can do it, trust me, I'm the most like average person you you could meet. Nothing special about me at all, you know, but I just said to myself, if I can just push through that pain, if I could just push through whatever I was going through a little bit longer and just hold on, there's, there's a great reward just past that. Yeah. You know, so I really do hope those words reach anyone who's in a bad situation or, you know, rely on your friends, you know, like have a very tight knit group around you. Um, cause it will be difficult. That's the only thing I can promise people. It, it will be difficult. It will be very hard. The hardest fight of your life, to be honest. Um, but if you accept those, those terms, it's a drop in the bucket, you know, it's a drop in the bucket. You know, this is who you are. It's not just what you do. This is who you are. There's paint running through our veins, not blood. You know what I mean? So <laughs> go on, go on. Do what you were designed to do. Yeah, do what you were designed to do. You were what you were put on this earth to do. No, that's you know, I promise you, it will, it will, it will make you a better person. You yeah. know, I yeah. promise you it will. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. No, that's and you you got it. You hit it. Well, hey, thank you again so much, Andy, for coming on. Uh that was that was awesome. And I'm looking forward to uh putting this out, sharing this with people and excited for people to be encouraged and hopefully catch some of the fire that you got, man. So anyway, you have a great rest of your day. Okay. You too, my friend. 